Hey guys, it's Tuesday, December 20th, 2011. Last Christmas, I, gave you my heart. I have something to talk about, and it's something that my friend group has recently become quite obsessed with. I just finished reading it. Um, Amber's already read it. It's going to Wendy and then Emily Sean next. And that is a book entitled The Male Brain. I don't have it with me because I just gave it back to Amber, but I'm going to put a link to it on Amazon in the doobly-doo down here. So basically, The Male Brain is a psychology book that talks about how different hormones affect guys' brains in different stages of their lives. What I've done is I've pulled a couple of sort of excerpts from the book that were things that I thought were super interesting and in some way applied to my life or the people that I interact with. So it starts off in the toddler stage of life, and even here there are fundamental differences between guys and girls. Boys prefer roughhousing and like violent games, GI games, car races, because it turns on their turf instinct. It gets them ready to be competitive, to start protecting their area. It even starts ordering them in a social structure, which I found out is extremely important to guys. According to the book, guys are almost always ranked subconsciously. In their teenage years, boys start making this hormone that makes their mother smell repulsive to them. Obviously, like, they don't consciously smell it, but inside of them, something registers that she smells really bad, and this is to stop inbreeding. But when girls are just chattering on about nothing, we usually talk in this kind of high-pitched voice and we're talking really fast and not a whole lot's being said and that's when guys just tend to tune out. There's a reason for that. It's because your brain is taking in those signals as white noise and not activating. So you're not actively trying not to listen. Your brain is not recognizing that someone is talking. Your brain is just hearing white noise. So you physically cannot listen to us when we talk like that. Your brain can't take in the information. <laughs> then you get into kind of the older stages of the book. This one was called The Mating Brain. People have not really a smell, but sort of a subconscious scent that allows people to smell their genetic material. So when two people meet, they smell each other, and they can actually smell whether their DNA is too similar to breed. Obviously it's not fail-proof, but clearly it works most of the time. <laughs> the testosterone levels of a guy during their life, they change a lot. So as a child, they have the small level of testosterone, and in their teenage years, it goes up. The age of 17, they have 20 times as much testosterone in their system as they did at the age of seven. And then over the years, um, they go up from the spike and they kind of come back down like that um, as they get older and older. As their testosterone levels go down, they start responding more to the estrogen and octocin levels in their system, which are the female hormone. And this makes older guys more emotional, more sensitive, more caring, because these are the things that women are programmed to be in order to take care of children. Which is one of the reasons that young girls often date older men. I guess one of the things that I found most interesting about the book is that there is a fundamental difference between the way women's brains work and the way men's brains work. The male brain is made to solve problems, to protect, and to carry on the species. The female brain is essentially designed to create the best future. Basically where the male brain is all about making the next generation and protecting them, the female brain is about making them the best that they can be. Megan, I will see you online tomorrow.